Hi everyone. By the end of this lecture, I'd like you to be able to describe basic ultrasound physics and describe what black, white, and gray is on ultrasound. Describe the basics of color and pulse wave Doppler and explain and apply ultrasound orientation. As the name suggests, ultrasound is actually sound. Piezoelectric crystal in the transducer converts electricity to sound. The sound, which is well above the audible range, progresses through the tissue and bounces back, or echoes, from the different tissues it encounters. The reflective waves then return to the transducer, which convert the sound back into electricity and the computer creates an image. This modality is non-ionizing and real-time. To make an image, the computer makes a few assumptions. First, it assumes that the longer the return echo time, the deeper the echo was. Longer time is deeper. It also thinks that echo amplitude or loudness will decrease as the echoes are further away. However, we want to look at a uniform field, so the computer will correct for this by increasing image gain with depth, making a more uniform field. However, the assumption is that deeper is quieter. That will come into play later. The compensation will make differences in echogenicity due to tissue characteristics alone. That compensation is called a time gain compensation. For ultrasound, black is anechoic, meaning no sound rays are returning to the probe at this level, and all sound is passing through. The grayscale from there is in relative terms. If it is relatively dark, it is described as hypoechoic, and hyperechoic if it is relatively bright. If two structures are the same echogenicity, they are isoechoic. To simplify it, fluid is anechoic, Soft tissue, like muscle and liver, are hypoechoic. Fat is more hyperechoic, and air, stones, and bones are very hyperechoic. For example, the fluid in the gallbladder here is anechoic. The liver is hypoechoic to the abdominal fat, and the gallstones are hyperechoic. Now that we roughly know how the computer makes an image and how to describe it, let's look at four basic artifacts based on the assumptions we discussed earlier. There are many more artifacts you need to know, but these are the most useful in daily practice. First, remember that the computer interprets longer time as deeper. If we have a hyperechoic object, the sound waves may reflect off that object, return to the transducer, reflect off the transducer, and return to the object, and so on. It bounces back and forth. Because the computer interprets time as distance, it will make this picture. This is called a reverberation artifact. A similar process can happen on a smaller scale and will result in a tapered series of lines called a comet tail artifact. The next assumption is that deeper is quieter. If there was no compensation for this, every image would have this gradient on top of it. With time gain compensation, however, the gain is increased with depth and the image is made more uniform. However, this can create artifacts as well. Posterior shadowing is the most intuitive. An echogenic structure will reflect most of the sound waves and fewer than the computer expects will get through. However, the reverse is true. Sound will pass through a cystic structure and more sound waves than the computer expects will get to the field deep to that cyst. This is called posterior acoustic enhancement. You can think of this as a reverse shadow. Here are examples of the common artifacts. We have a reverb artifact in a cyst wall and from the IUD in the uterus. Here is comet tail artifact from adenomyomatosis in the gallbladder wall and in a colloid cyst in the thyroid. Here is posterior acoustic shadowing from a stone in the kidney and in the gallbladder. Here is posterior acoustic enhancement from a cyst in the cervix and in the liver. Color Doppler is useful for showing blood flow and direction in real time. By convention, red is towards the probe and blue is away from the probe. You can check in the upper left of the screen for the scale and the direction. You should know that if the blood flows faster than the limit set, it will flip back to the beginning. So for here, as blood moves away from the probe, it will be blue and then go to white. However, if it goes above 11 centimeters per second here, it will flip back to red. This is called aliasing. This is an example of aliasing in the main renal artery. 
Pulse Wave Doppler is similar to Color Doppler, but instead of looking at an area as a whole, it investigates a specific volume between a gate. Rather than show direction as color, it will show direction on the graph. This allows for more sophisticated analysis, such as peak velocity, ratio of diastolic and systolic flow, and more. One of the most difficult parts of learning ultrasound is just getting oriented to each image. Here is an ultrasound machine and a transducer. The notch in blue here corresponds to the marker on the top left of the screen. By convention, the notches faces towards the patient's right or the patient's head, depending on the image. You can think of ultrasound like a flashlight. It sweeps through the organ with a beam oriented in relation to the organ rather than to the body, like CT and MRI. So for ultrasound, we say short axis and long axis of the organ. Your goal for each ultrasound image you see is to roughly identify where the sonographer placed the transducer on the patient's body. Here is a CT of an abdomen in sagittal, axial, and coronal. We look through CT's orthogony. Although ultrasound can see many of the same organs, it looks at the organs differently. Ultrasound acts more like a flashlight. We can demonstrate the difference on a multiplanar CT. For this example, focus on the patient's right kidney. Pretend that the middle of the crosshairs is a footprint of the transducer. First, we have to find an acoustic window on the skin, then orient the beam to the organ. To look at the organ, the sonographer will sweep through the organ, generally from one acoustic window. They do this in long axis and in short axis. To finish up, let's do some practice. Look at these images and see if you can identify where the sonographer placed the transducer. Transverse through the liver, looking superiorly, you can see the hepatic veins draining into the IVC. Transverse through the liver, but more inferior because the IVC is a circle and the hepatic veins are further out. Long axis of the liver. Here are some more. Transverse through the gallbladder. Long axis through the gallbladder. Short axis through the kidney. Long axis of the kidney. Thanks for your attention.